Hey, in this video, I'm going to give you the five steps to be ready and not miss the next opportunity that's going to knock on your door. Because the last thing you want, and you might not know it, but an insane opportunity is going to come your way, is right now coming your way. And the last thing you want, believe me, is to not be ready and just miss it just because you didn't have these five steps and maybe have the patience to actually watch and apply this video. When you go through this video, please ask yourself, okay, how can I use this? Is he right here? Is this something that I can use, that, that I can use in my life? Go through this video in this way and it will serve you tremendously. If you're new here, my name is Ivaldi Sacco. Welcome on the Ivaldi Sacco podcast. I guess this is what its name is. Uh, here, I help ambitious entrepreneurs build a great empire, build a great life. A life that is worth suffering for because online in, in here we're going to suffer a lot, right? So we might as well enjoy it. And uh, yeah, if you want to be successful, if you want to be truly free and successful, if you want to grow an insane business, I think this is a podcast for you. I think this is the YouTube channel for you, whatever it is. Just pay attention. It's going to get very useful. So let's get into it. These lessons I learned uh, this week. Uh, these are five steps that I got from the lessons I learned this week and I learned them First of all, I had the idea for this Podcast for this episode When I was in church, I was in church and the sermon was about the, the priest was saying Okay, we, we, you got to be ready for the kingdom of God. You got to be ready And so I was like, oh, yeah, you, you don't want to be surprised when the kingdom of God comes because you're not going to be ready and you're going to miss it, right? And so I was like, this is, a, this is the same thing in business. This is the same thing in life. You don't want to miss a great opportunity just because you were not ready. And it caught you off guard. And you were not able to actually do anything. And this opportunity just went by for nothing, right? You don't want to have, have this like regret of not having done these things that can prepare you to actually be ready. If an opportunity comes, boom. You're good. You're good to go and you actually take advantage of it and you get you get pretty rich, right? You get either rich or maybe you can find the woman of your life, the husband of your life. You can find the great uh, co-founder that you're looking for. You can find whatever you're looking for. You can get this opportunity to be the speaker in a great event. But because you were not ready you miss it. You don't want this to happen. So let's get into it. These are the five steps that I, uh, I'm i going to take. I've uh, actually done pretty much like all these things, but uh, not necessarily in this order. I'm going to give them to you in this order. I don't think it's uh, necessarily in this order, but I, I think each and every single one of them is very important. So listen closely and let's get into it. So the first thing is Becoming aware. Becoming aware of your current situation. Where are you right now? And telling yourself the truth. Because you, it's very easy to be lying to yourself unconsciously. It's very easy to not know exactly where you are right now and why you're not making progress to your, toward your goals. So what you want is to look at your life the past two or three weeks, right? And tell yourself the truth. David Goggins has this thing. It's called the accountability mirror, right? He looks in the mirror and he tells himself the raw truth, the unfiltered truth. You're fat. You're too big. You don't, you don't know how to run, right? Tell yourself the things that you need. Like, tell yourself the truth, right? Because you need to be aware of where you are right now. You need to be willing to face the truth first to be able to move forward and actually do the next steps and uh, be ready for an opportunity. Because if you're not ready, if you, if you first don't know where you are right now, you're never going to be ready for an opportunity that comes to your way because you don't know how to prepare. Because being ready means to be prepared, to have prepared in advance. Now, th there's a dichotomy here. There's a dualism that you don't want to be always to focus on preparation and just not taking action 
but you want to be prepared for an opportunity that come, may come your way. And you want to be prepared for the biggest opportunities. Like, don't waste your time being prepared for, like, every single little eventuality of life, right? You, you can't do this. You need to be ready and firm for life, for your goals, for the things, the, the big opportunities, right? But you don't need to prepare at the same time, right? There's a dichotomy here. You don't need to prepare for, like, every single possibility that can happen in the street like if, if something happens in the street and something someone calls me out some people get this wrong and they try to prepare for everything because they're so scared of you know either feeling shameful because they were not ready feeling shameful because they didn't know something you, you need to be ready but for the important things right this goes without saying but i'm going to tell you, give you some more precise example later so First of all, you need to realize where you are truly and becoming aware of, of where you fall short. And this, just becoming aware, makes you instantly do the right things, do, go in the right direction because you, you now know where you are and you don't like it, right? If you did like it, you wouldn't be listening to this, right? If you, you, would, you have a goal, right? So you want to be somewhere else. You want to get to some other place so you don't necessarily like or are satisfied with where you are currently. You want to get to some other place. And this other place, to get to it, you need to do some different things. And so this be becoming aware of, of your current situation and what you're doing right now. So ask yourself, oh, what was I doing th these last two, three weeks? What did I do really that prevented me from achieving my goals that were not great behaviors? Maybe I was distracted by something. Maybe I got too emotional on this thing. Ask yourself, okay, where did I fall short these two, three weeks? What are my patterns? What are the things that just constantly, like, I'm, I'm not doing this right. Maybe I'm not working hard enough. Ask yourself, okay, where do I stand now? What's my current situation? Where do I live? Do I like where I live? Is this where I want to die? Ask yourself, okay. Let your brain think. Hmm. No, I, I don't want to live here. I don't want to remain at, at this income level. Okay, I don't want to... I don't want to remain poor. I don't want to stay fat. I don't want to... Like, all these things I don't want. Or maybe you really want something else, right? You really want to learn to do something. And right now you don't know how to do this. You really want to learn how to ride horses and you don't know how and you haven't taken a single step toward this thing, right? There's a dream that you have, you, you haven't taken the step toward this thing, right? To go there, becoming aware makes you immediately go there, like turn at least yourself toward the right direction because you're aware of this and you kind of discuss it, uh, okay. Because this, this week, I just did that. I just wrote down exactly what, I, what was my current situation, what I was doing, what I was doing wrong. And without trying to fix it, I've fixed it. I, I fixed it pretty much in, in a good amount. So I immediately like, started taking action to sleep earlier. Without even trying to, I just did. Because I was, this awareness made me like, I, I need to do more. Right. This and automatically we're just I was just doing more and I got to sleep earlier. Easier. Like it was very easy for me to do this just because I became aware. So first of all, become aware. Second, know what drives you. People are driven by different things. You want something like there's, there's something that really motivates you. And to find out what it is, you need to ask yourself why you want your goal. So you have a goal you want, or maybe you don't want to be here anymore. Ask yourself, why? Why do I want this goal? Why do I not want to be in this situation anymore? What is the reason? And the first reason is a surface level answer. What you need to do is dig deeper. Ask yourself why again? And why again? And do this five, seven times as much as you need to really find a deep reason, emotional reason, why you want to do this. 
And when you know this, you know what drives you. And sometimes the, the, there are different areas of life that drive people. Sometimes you can be driven by meeting a deadline, right? Just the, the idea that you just meet this deadline and actually just check off a, a thing that you needed to do makes you like move faster, right? And maybe it's thinking about getting this amount of money. You're motivated by money. You're motivated by just getting more things, material things. Maybe you're motivated by status, by how people are going to look at you thanks to this material thing, right? How are going to people look at you when you have achieved this? Ha, they're going to look at me different. They're going to, right? Maybe you're motivated by this. Maybe you're motivated by competition. You want to be better. Maybe you're motivated by some um, desire to be accomplished, right? Some desire to be more, to be, yeah, to, to just, uh, how do you say that? Yeah, just to just become more, right? Maybe you, you're motivated by just creating history, right? Making people talk about you for years and years to come. Maybe you want to change the world. Maybe you want to actually help. You you feel so motivated to help the other others others. Forgive me. You have to find out what really drives you. And when you find this, try to imagine a situation in your mind. The brain does not make the difference between a real situation and an imaginary situation or a memory. Right? You when you you perceive things. For example, when you dream. Right? When you dream. You have a bad dream and you, your body actually sweats when you sweat in the dream because you're scared of something, right? And you, you wake up, <gasps> and you have the physiology, right, of being scared because you were scared in, in your dream, in your nightmare. So you can imagine situations where you are accomplishing, you are in this like area that drives you, it's, it's becoming real. Right. So, for example, you uh, you are really driven by status. You want people to look at you in a certain way. You can imagine this. You can imagine going to a certain uh, place or certain um, event and going there with your nice car. Right. You have a new Porsche. You go there and you have a status and you have accomplished a lot of things. You have made a million dollars. You have made a million dollars this month. It's just like everybody look at, looks at you. Oh my God, this is the guy. And you're dressed well, nicely. And you feel really just awesome about yourself because everybody looks at you. And you f try, try to imagine this situation. Imagine how, we, how this feels. And then when you're not that motivated, you can... You, you just basically... When, when you know what drives you, you have a button. You have a button to push to immediately when you don't feel like it. Okay, you push this, this button and you're motivated again. And you just, boom, you can go move, move faster. Again, just because you, you have remembered this situation that can happen if you actually do the action. Right? So know what drives you and use it. Create a situation and imagine, like, visualize this thing that drives you happening. Right? And make the link between what you need to do now and this thing that you're going to do right now is going to get you very close. Like you're very close to getting to, to this situation that you, that you dream of. This thing that drives you. Okay, I'm going to, like, everybody is going to look at me different right now just because I'm, I'm going to do this. It's very close. Also, like, having this perception of it's not that far away. It's very close. This way, you're driven. Like, you can't, because you believe you can do it, right? And you're motivated to actually get to this situation that you like, right? This situation of, of people looking at you like this. You're motivated to get there. And because you tie it with the action that you need to do right now, you, you know you can do it. And so you have the ability to do it and the motivation to do it. You're actually going to take action and be very fast in your movement. And this way, not gonna, you, you, you're, least li you're, you're really not likely to miss an opportunity. If it, an opportunity knocks your door, knocks, knocks, on your door you on, knocks on your door, forgive my English, you're going to push this button and boom. And so th this is very powerful. 
Number three, you don't need to know how to do something. This is just becoming aware of this thing. Like you don't need to know how to do something. Because oftentimes you just get caught up in preparation of the little things, right? Be like trying to know, figure out how I'm going to do something before you actually need to do it. You get caught up in all of the problems that are going to come your way by doing this thing, by taking on this business, by ta- by uh, doing this next uh, project. You get caught up. All you need to do, all you need to know, is why you're doing it, why you're doing it, and to believe truly and to have proof that you can figure it out. If you really believe this, you're going to take action even when you don't know how. And this is a must. This is a requirement. Because if you're doing something new that you've never done before, it is impossible for you to know how to do it. You don't know how to do it because you've never done it before. It's normal, right? But if you let this stop you, you're never going to do it and you're never going to know how to do it and so you're never going to achieve it. So what you must do is to believe, to have this, just remember a a moment in your life when you have actually done something that you had no idea how to do, but you just, like, you just did it, right? You just, okay, I'm going to do this right now and we'll see how, how it goes. Try to remember, okay, when in my life did I do this? When... I did not know exactly how to do something. I just did it. And it came like, I, I did it. I don't know exactly how I did it, but I did it. But it, it just happened because I figured it out. And so ask yourself, when did this happen? And now you can repeat this memory in your mind. And when you repeat this memory in your mind, when you remember this scene, when you didn't know how to do it, some do something, and you just figured it out, you try to be, you start to believe that you you can actually do it. When you actually believe that you can do it, you can you can just figure it out, and you don't need to know how. You're going to be ready to actually take the actions, and you're not going to let the you know the the how. You you're not going to let the how prevent you from going to achieve the thing that you need to achieve. You must always be ready. This is the fourth step. This is like kind of like an explanation of how, what, it, what does it mean to be really ready? This means that you need to be prepared to have, to, to know what to do when an opportunity comes. To know what to do in a circumstance that could happen. And so, you got to be ready in different areas of your life. Because to me, I was thinking about this, as I told you, when I was in church. And the sermon was about being ready for the kingdom of God. Because you never know when this, this day is going to happen. And I was like, okay, I never know when an opportunity is going to happen. You never know when... For example, if your dream is to be a public speaker, a great public speaker, and one time, one day, you have someone coming to you and telling you, hey, by the way, do you, do you, I need a speaker right now. Can you, can you go and give a speech right now? And if you're not ready right now, you're going to beat yourself up. Like you have this op- great opportunity to just, I was presented to you and you were not ready. And maybe you actually, like, you, you're going to say no, first of all, because you, you would be so scared, right? Because it's the best thing that you ever wanted to happen, but you're not, you don't have anything. So either way, e- either you're going to say no, or you're going to do it, and you're not going to do it as, as well as you would want to, because you were not ready. So for example, being ready in this case, if your dream is to be a public speaker, is to always have a speech prepared, Right? Have a speech that you have repeated so many times that you know, okay, this thing in the in my area of business, I know this will serve a lot of people and I will be able to give this speech if someone had to ask me, if someone needed it, I could give this speech, right? You need to be ready in this case. I, I think women do better at... Do better th- yeah, prepare better 
than men, in my experience. Because you see, for example, women will always uh, get out and most of the time dress nicely, right? Just in case they meet a good looking man, right? They want to be ready for this opportunity. And I thought of this for, for me too, as well, in, in the same scenario. I was like, okay, uh, I'm not always ready. I'm not always good looking, well dressed, well groomed when I go out and I might meet the girl of my dreams. That's kind of stupid. Why would I not be always ready? Always be sharp, dress nicely, right? This kind of things like being ready is always just be ready in how you dress. Be ready for the skills that you need to do something that you want to do. It may be for a big problem to happen. Be ready financially. Be ready for your death. I was like, okay, uh, am I ready if I die right now? Have I said all the things I would want to say to the people I love? Maybe not. Have I set my family free financially? Have, uh, where do, does my money go when I, when, I, when I die? I, I, you, you need to prepare, right? I'm not prepared to die right now. Like if I were to die right now, uh, it, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Are you prepared? Are you, are you ready if an opportunity came to you right now? Oftentimes we're not. Like most people are not. And it's okay. You just need to be, realize it. I just realize it. I'm not. I'm not ready right now. For a lot of things that we want, I'm not ready. But you have the opportunity to become ready right now by asking yourself, okay, you're becoming aware of those things. Try to be ready. Now, another thing is because this is going to prevent you from moving forward. So you might be ready, you might uh, have a speech prepared, but this thing really like prevents you from moving forward. It, it keeps you stuck. And so if, you, if you're stuck and you're in this kind of energy, I'm going to tell you right now, you, you're going to, first of all, you, you're not going to attract really a great opportunity for you because you're not going to put the actions in place to do so. Never complain or put blame on someone or anything. Forgive and move forward. If you keep blaming and you don't forgive, you will stay stuck. Forgiveness is Jesus Christ thing, right? It, like, he, he, he's forgiven the world for putting him to death. And I promise you, this is so powerful when you are actually like you hold a grudge against someone you hold a grudge against something that happened to you when you were a kid anything and you blame someone or something else for your circumstance or for anything that happened really you are being stuck in yourself you, you are you're putting some kind of like emotion inside of you that prevents you from moving forward and I promise you, when you start forgiving, really, and you really think, okay, I forgive, so I don't mind it anymore. I, it's okay. I forgive you. It doesn't mean like you, you, you just forget, but you don't focus on it anymore on it. Like it, You might still remember it if you need to, okay, but it, it doesn't mean as well that you don't, you will uh, now be okay with this type of behavior. If someone has cheated on you, for, for example, Forgiving doesn't mean being okay with it. Being like, okay, that someone else does it for you. It just means that you're not going to keep it from, from letting you moving forward. It, you, you're not going to hold it in you, right? You forgive and this means that you let go. This means like, okay, I, I don't care. I don't care anymore. It's okay. I forgive you. It's... I'm good. I'm good with that. Like, it doesn't bother me anymore. Because if it keeps bothering you, it keeps you stuck. And this emotion, like, I promise you, it's, it feels liberating when you actually forgive. When you think about this person that hurt you and you say, I forgive you. Even in your mind, I forgive this person. It helps you out so much. It makes you feel free. And it allows you to move forward. 
if you don't forgive, you will keep, you will stay stuck. You will have something in you that is just like, and even in, sometimes in social situations, you might be with someone and some kind of similar topic comes to to the conversation, and you start having these emotions again. You don't want to be this kind of emotional person around this blame that you that you just keep putting on people. You take responsibility. This is the first thing that you need to do to just move forward. You take responsibility. It's your job to actually move forward. I take responsibility. It's my own. I can do this. I can change my life right now. I can change the things that are around me. I have the power to do so. To do so. And so you actually do and you forgive. It doesn't matter what they did. It doesn't matter what they did. I can move forward. I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm moving forward. That's it. And then you also need to understand the macro, the macro balance in your life. Because for me, because this will prevent you from, uh, you know, going full in, full on an opportunity. Because sometimes an opportunity is going to require you to be unbalanced. And keeping yourself, like trying to keep your routines and stay in this comfort zone, Really, even if you do something productive, but you do it every day, you have bit. It's your, it's a habit that you have. It becomes comfortable at one point. Even if this comfort is moving you forward, sometimes it will keep you from going all in in an opportunity. And so, for example, for me, I, I had to tell myself it's okay to not learn anything for a while because I, I realized I, I was not. I, I stopped reading. I stopped learning pretty much anything. I stopped learning. I, I didn't learn anything for the past like two, three, two, three weeks. But it's okay. Why? Because I'm actually applying what I learned before. I'm actually like going all in in the opportunity that I need to pursue right now. So it's okay to go and balance for time and to let your routines aside for a moment. Stop reading, stop learning, and actually start applying. There's always a balance. It do, balance doesn't mean 50-50. It means sometimes going 90% full on in and just keeping this 10% just to, keep, to stay healthy, right? Also, something that might prevent you from just actually being ready for an opportunity and actually taking advantage of this opportunity would be to not be healthy. Like, honestly, this would be the worst thing that you could do. And if you happen to not be healthy, first of all, be, being tired and not, having not slept enough, this is a big thing. This is a big, big thing. And I'm going to try this week to sleep every single day nine hours. If I can do this, I'm sure the results of my business will just go off the, the roof because you, you are able to produce so much more. You're happier. You have a better attitude. Everything... Go becomes better if, when you sleep nine hours. I promise you. And so I'm going to try to do this. And if you want to be healthy, full, like really, and learn more about how to be really healthy, have be more productive, be more focused, and all those things, there's an episode I did on this. I don't remember really the, the number of the episode. It has to be like something like uh, 44 or 46. It's on a sleep. It's going to be very useful to you. And if you're addicted to something, it might also prevent you from doing the right things that are going to help you achieve your goals and take on this opportunity. And it, to stop being addicted, I made an episode. I think it was the last one, or maybe the one bef before that. It's, it's on addiction. How to prevent you, like how to erase and break the cycle of addiction. If you are in this, like if you want to, Go check those episodes. It's going to it's going to be tremendously useful. And if you like this podcast, like this show, subscribe to not miss to not miss the next episodes, and I'll see you in another one. Take care.